Well, humanity has prevailed. But it was touch and go there for a second. And no, Sam Altman is not calling somebody a psycho. He's saying, good job, I hope. What just happened? Let's unpack this really quick. So first and foremost, this is from earlier today. This is Greg Brockman, president of OpenAI, saying that they've entered one of their coding models into a coding competition. The competition is 10 hours long, and for about, you know, nine plus of those hours, this model has been wiping the floor with the human competitors. Now, you might recall this little clip that I posted not that long ago. This was Sam Altman in Tokyo at the beginning of the year 2025, at the beginning of this year. And it's basically Sam talking about the progress of OpenAI's coding model. Their first ever reasoning model was the millionth best code in the world. O1 in September 2024 was ranked, let's say, right around the 10,000th best coder in the world. O3, the kind of last big model that was released. We have O4 Mini and O4 Mini High, but O3 was the last full model release. It was ranked 175th in the world. And at the time, again, beginning of 2025, he was saying that they had an internal model at OpenAI that was the 50th best in the world, and they expected a superhuman coder by end of year 2025. And there's a lot of great arguments in the comments kind of criticizing this take. We'll, we'll get to them in a second, but this was just kind of an interesting thing to keep an eye on. So again, in February, they had an internal model and in the 50th spot, projecting to superhuman coder as in, you know, number one spot by the end of 2025. And here we are, July 2025, and this AI model that's at the at coder world finals in Japan has been sitting at the number one spot for most of the competition. There's a lot of speculation about which model this is. So OpenAI AHC, AHC stands for at coder heuristic competition or contest. So some people are wondering if this is a GPT-5, but it's likely some internal model. So we just know it as sort of this handle. Now notice Sai Ho is in spot number two. Can you guess how this ended? I, I mean, I already told you at the beginning, Sai Ho takes the number one spot, I think within like an hour or like 40 minutes of the end of the competition. It's a 10 hour long competition. Sai Ho is saying humanity has prevailed. He's exhausted, had 10 hours of sleep in the last three days, and he's uh, barely alive. Interestingly, Sai Ho is ex open AI. I guess he worked on the Dota, the Dota 5. OpenAI apparently was the first AI to beat the world champions in an esports game. So this is 2019 or thereabouts. By the way, that whole competition was streamed. I'll leave the link down in the description below. So these two gentlemen on the right are from the OpenAI team. They're working on the reasoning models. So at Coder is a coding competition in Japan. There are two sort of categories or tracks, the heuristic and the algorithm. So this is the first time I'm hearing about it. So forgive me if I get some details wrong here, but this model is taking place in the heuristic side. So the at coder heuristic competition where they do what's called NP hard optimization problems. So these are problems that don't have a simple algorithmic solution. You're trying to find something that optimizes it, does it to the best of its ability. So here in the bottom left, I'm going to play this. You can kind of see if I'm reading this correctly, so each of these little things is like a robot and it can move one space at a time. And the, the goal is to get them to their final destination in the least amount of moves possible. So the goal is to write some sort of a algorithm or some sort of a script that efficiently moves them about to solve that problem. And the person that gets the most efficient output gets the high score. And you do that for 10 hours straight. Notice OpenAI is sitting in the number one spot. And uh, there's uh, quite a gap between, you know, the OpenAI model and Sai Ho, uh, who is in second place. So here's another example of, I think this is something that OpenAI, that model submitted to how to solve this particular problem. And this whole thing really reminds me of that Alpha Go game by Google DeepMind against the world champion in the game of Go, Lisa Dole. He's here on my right. And that game took place in 2016. And this is Lisa Dull. He was not very happy. He was extremely upset about the result. 
This is Demi Sasabis and Sergey Brin. They were very happy with the result. They're trying to be respectful. You can tell they were just ecstatic about this. So that was about a decade ago when these neural nets, these AIs learned how to move little pieces around the board and being better able to do it than, than human players could. In fact, that idea of the move 37, you might have heard about this. That came from this very game where the AI neural nets, they came up with a strategy, this, this move that was novel. It was different from how humans played the game. In fact, a lot of the spectators and commentators thought that the AI screwed up when it made that move. They're like, oof, that's a bad move. It's going to have a hard time recovering from that. But after the AI proceeded to win the game, looking back at it, people realized like, oh, that was actually a great pivotal move that sealed the game. It just took us a while to, you know, catch up and realize it. And now, almost 10 years later, we're seeing kind of a lot of similarities between that and this at Coder World Finals 2025. But now humans aren't competing in moving these pieces around ourselves, but rather creating little scripts and algorithms that try to find the most optimal solution to those problems. And here's the standings through most of the games. So this is very early. Some of the scores haven't even been tallied yet for some of the earlier problems, but for the most part, the internal OpenAI model, it's on top, it's number one. And it maintains a lead up until, I mean, this is like one hour remaining. Sai Ho is catching up. So he's within just a short distance of OpenAI's model. Here's a 47 minutes left. He's even closer. And this is 25 minutes left. He takes the lead. So humanity has prevailed for now, but boy, were we close. I mean, Sam Altman didn't expect a superhuman coder till the end of the year. A superhuman coder by July certainly would have been ahead of schedule. Now, really fast. Does this mean that coders are out of a job, that software engineering won't be a good career to go into? I, I don't think so. We just talked to a couple of people that used to work at Google. One of them was VP of engineering. The other was in the mergers and acquisitions. So I'll link that interview down below if you haven't seen it. The point is, like the book says, don't panic. It's not time to panic yet. Here's why. So a lot of these tests, they're competitive programming. So it's kind of its own little niche just because something is really good at cracking those little problems doesn't translate into it necessarily being a great engineer. The other big point we discussed is the fact that these cursors and windsurf and all of the other, you know, VS code plus chatbot kind of AI assisted IDEs, the valuation for those things is, is going vertical. Just today, Amazon slash AWS released their own version of it. Of course, Windsurf was attempted to be acquired by OpenAI and Google and Cognition Labs, the people behind it, Devon. So like these are in hot demand. Everybody's trying to either build their own or acquire them. This seems to suggest that no one's betting on fully automated AI coding agents that are just around the corner. Because you probably would not need these tools. These tools do require, you know, a human in the loop and an engineer kind of orchestrating all these agents and, and being kind of enabled by these coding agents to do more. So my take has been that it's not going to replace great engineers. It's going to enable great engineers. Now, I think also it's going to make it a lot more accessible for people, like a lot more people will jump in and get to vibe code certain things. But the people with the brain power and the skills to be great engineers, uh, they're not going to be out of business anytime soon. I, I would not bet on that. So I just want people to kind of keep that in mind as we're talking about this uh, superhuman AI coder, et cetera, that right now it does seem like excellent news for all of us. It will enable people to do more. As Saiho says here, you know, these are provisional results, but my lead should be big enough. So I guess once they start tallying everything up, I guess there's a chance that he might fall back to the second place, but the lead does seem pretty big. And here he kind of describes where he thinks AI would easily win versus where humans would easily win. A situation where AI would win would be standard or extremely noisy problem, plus a huge budget, so a huge thinking budget for the AI. So you're letting it burn through a lot of tokens to get to the solution. And it's easy to find situations where human will where humans will win. It's creative problems with complex base solutions plus the same testing budget as humans. 
this is kind of in line with what I think Arc AGI talks about, right? So the idea that we tend to, we're more sample efficient, we have a more fluid intelligence, we're better able to quickly come up with novel solutions for things that we haven't seen before, like we're able to quickly spot patterns and then figure out how to use those patterns to solve problems. And I think this is kind of great news for everyone because there's likely that there's going to be spaces where AI and the neural nets, where it is the ultimate solution, where it's unbeatable by humans in, in certain kind of spaces. And there's going to be certain spaces where humans will still win out every single time. So let me know what you thought about all of this. Do you think this is a big deal that there's this sort of level of internal models at OpenAI? Or do you think even if they top all the leaderboards at these competitive coding contests, that it's still not really going to make much of a difference to the real world? Let me know in the comments. And if you made it this far, good job, Psycho. My name is Wes Roth. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.